Uh, hey everyone, uh, Psychopathic One here. Uh, this video was supposed to go up on, uh, the 31st, but I had so much stuff I had to do. Um, so I'm bringing the video today. And that's my re review over pieces. Uh, I re I reviewed, uh, this movie once before. And I had a blast with the movie. I thought it was a really fun movie. Um, it's a murder mystery movie. With a hell of a lot of gore. Um, it starts off in 1942. We've got this little boy uh, building his puzzle. And what happens is his mother ends up coming in and seeing what he's doing. First she thinks, oh, he's just building a puzzle. But then, uh, she finds out it's a dirty puzzle, rips it apart, uh, gets all, gets pretty much overreacting about the puzzle, and all of a sudden, the boy, uh, is asked, well, forced to go out of the room and, uh, get a trash bag to get everything uh, from his room taken out because the mother thinks, oh, well, if he's got this dirty puzzle, he's probably got more dirty stuff. So he comes back, has an axe, and hacks the mom up, hacks her into pieces. Uh, we don't see the full uh, effect of uh, him cutting the body up into pieces, but we do see uh, him hacking the body up, uh, but we don't see the body being hacked up, we just see the saw going back and forth, and then he's covered in blood, which I found to be really cool. Like, you don't see a, the start of the movie, uh, at least back in the 80s, you don't see the start of the movie starting with something so brutal. So, uh, the police end up coming, uh, and they find the mom's body parts, uh, inside the closet, and they find the little boy there, the boy's acting like, oh, a big, a big man, uh, came by and killed my mom, and yet the boy is the one covered in blood, and the whole room's a mess, uh, there's blood all over the place, and so... They think, oh, well, uh, the boy, uh, uh, seems traumatized, so they'll, uh, they'll put him over to, uh, one of his other relatives. So, he, uh, grows up, uh, it's 40 years later, so 1982 when the movie was made, um, and, uh, a killer's on the loose, uh, in a college campus, and the the point of the movie, you have to find out who exactly is killing the people. Well, you already know who's killing the people. But you have to figure out who is the little kid. Uh, like, what is he all grown up? Um, and the deaths come quick and fast. The first actual death after the mother dies... Um, a girl, she's reading a book, and just studying and everything, and what happens is, the killer comes up behind her, starts up the chainsaw, first, uh, the gardener starts his chainsaw, so she thinks nothing of it, she just says, hey, could you keep it down, I'm studying, but then, the killer walks up behind her, in daylight, and, uh, the killer revs up the chainsaw and slices her head off. And, oh, I thought the way the head got cut off, I thought it was amazing. Good, beautiful practical effects, uh, if I can say that. Um, you can see uh, the beginning scene uh, right there. Uh, that's the mom getting uh, hacked in the head with the axe. Um, 
I don't know if you can see it, but his, his, uh, the gardener with his chainsaw played by Paul L. Smith, and then right there is the killer of the little kid. We don't get to see the killer's face until the end of the movie. Uh, so yeah, most of the time the killer is dressed up like this. Uh, he's got a black trench coat, a black uh, cowboy hat, or fedora, whatever you want to call it. And he carries around the chainsaw. Um, he hacks the girls to pieces. And he takes specific parts. Uh, like he takes an arm, or he takes the head, he takes the hand, um, and he sews up the body, uh, so that he can recreate his mother. So, I thought that was really badass. You don't see anything like that in other movies. You, the only way you can see a film like this being done today is straight to DVD. Like, you won't see nothing like this in the theater anymore, which is really, really sad. Um, I'd love to see a gore film other than Evil Dead. I saw that in the theater, and it was pretty badass. Um, but I want to see a true blue gore film that is an original idea, is not a remake, and is a straight-up slasher that pulls no punches and says, you know what? This is a horror movie, and we're going to give you the goods. We're going to give you some good kills. We're going to give you some good characters. Ones that you can cheer for. Not all this assholes uh, being assholes. But true blue characters going out there, getting killed. But having a good final girl or guy uh, standing up to the killer and figuring out, Oh, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stand up to the killer. And that's what I want to see. I want to see more films like Pieces, like Friday the 13th. Oh, has it popped up upside down. I want to see more films like Pieces, like Friday the 13th, like Friday the 13th Part 2, Part 3, Part 4, which is the second best one in my eyes. Part 5, maybe not. Uh, but part six, great movie. My favorite Friday the 13th movie. See films like uh, Halloween, Halloween 2, and so on. Uh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street has its moments. Uh, I, I like some of the Nightmare on Elm Streets. The only one I really didn't care much for was the fifth one. Um, but the just Hollywood. Get off your lazy asses and make a an original movie, not a remake. I mean, I don't mind remakes if they're done right, but get off your asses and put out a film that is worthy of seeing. And so, let's continue on with uh, some more of this film. It stars Linda Day George, before she was Linda Day George. Uh, it stars Christopher George. Um, and uh, the movie is pretty much, you've got this killer on the loose, and uh, you're trying to figure out who the killer is, and Linda Day plays the one of the detectives, and uh, Chris George plays uh, the lieutenant, and... They're forced uh, to figure out, oh, uh, where's the killer going to strike next? What's his motive? And uh, you're following the detectives around, and you're following one of the students around, played by... Uh, I don't know if it says it on the back. I think the guy's name is Mike Sarah. No relation to Michael Sarah. It might even be Paul Sarah. I don't know. Um, but... He plays uh, the role of the suave uh, jock uh, in the campus. Uh, he gets with the ladies. He gets around a lot. So you've got that. And 
we're following him around, but we're also following the detectives around. And anybody's a suspect. It could be the man or the woman who's a suspect. Uh, maybe the killer got a sex change. So, but I will give you this. It is most definitely a man. It, it gives you that plain as day that the man grew up, the man is a man, and he's got some... But, the way he kills these women, you actually feel bad for the characters. You feel bad when they die. Yeah, you get to know the girls a little bit, but then, after you get to know them, they are hacked to pieces, and I love it! Oh! I love gore films, sorry, sorry, I, I can't stress it enough. I love gore films. Why can't there be more gore films? I want to see the blood. I want to see the gore. Now, you can have a good horror movie without the blood and guts, but if you can get blood and guts, do them practically. Because practical effects are always better. No CGI, please. If you're gonna do CGI, do it like with... I'd say... The only time CGI is uh, appropriate is if uh, you can't get a hold of the practical uh, effects and you really uh, have CGI as a last resort. But other than that, do your effects with practical if you're going to go do gore effects. Like, the Friday the 13th, back on Friday the 13th, I know. My favorite film series, what can I say? Um, the Friday the 13th series, you've got Tom Savini, who's one of my... Actually, he is my all-time favorite special effects artist. He's doing his uh, stuff practically. He used to be a photographer for the... I think it was the Navy. Might have been Army. He used to be a photographer. He'd, uh, photograph the corpses, um, and that's how he got to know, uh, how realistic could the special effects look. And, uh, he tried his damnedest to make the best quality effects, uh, money can buy. So, what we've got here is a Spanish film, uh, running on a micro-budget, uh, I'll open up the liner notes real fast and see what we got. Let's see how much the effects cost. Um, so that doesn't say what the budget was. Um, it definitely got the R rating and well deserving of the R rating. This is the uncut, unrated version. Oh, I don't want to show the booklet off because it's a nude scene. And plus it spoils the ending, which I will be spoiling the ending, folks. That's how most of my movie reviews are. I like to tell you all out. I like to have no holds barred. I'm I'm going to be telling you the whole movie, what I liked, what I disliked, and there are more uh, things I liked about this film than I disliked. One thing I didn't like was the music. The music was this techno pop type of thing, and I'm not really into techno. And I like the original score better. Uh, if I could change anything, I'd. I changed the score that we got here in America, um, and another thing I would change, mm, probably, uh, the so-called hero of the film, uh, yeah, the lieutenant, I guess, is the hero, but the student we're following around, he could be... He could be acted a little bit better, uh, like they could have gotten a better actor. Uh, but he did his job, so he did the best he could. So, yeah. And, so, 
we've got, uh, this killer going around, uh, and we're following the, we're following the so-called killer, um, and, uh, Linda Day goes undercover, uh, I think the character's name is Mary, or Marie, um, and she's on the case, she's undercover, she goes undercover as a tennis instructor, so you've got that, and she, she plays some pretty good tennis, going back and forth, doing the tennis thing, not really into tennis, by the way. Uh, so you've got that, and um, what else? Oh, you've got this one guy by the name of Bruce Lay, L-E, and <laughs> he ends up just coming out of nowhere and just starting, uh, not really starting a fight, but <laughs> just doing tennis and, not tennis and stuff, and karate lessons right in front of the end of the day, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Um... So you've got that, and then he goes like, must have been bad calamari or something like that. And so you've got that, and there is really, there is nudity up the ass in this movie. Um, you see a lot of boobs, you see a dude's dick, which I did not need to see, but there's... There's more gore than anything, and uh, my favorite death, uh, a woman is going into the elevator, and uh, the killer's got the, his trench coat, his fashion sense going on, he looks badass, he's got uh, the chainsaw behind him, and he gets into the elevator, revs up the chainsaw, how he does this I do not know, he divides the laws of physics. He cuts the woman's arm off, and she is crying in pain, like, oh, stop, stop, please stop. And he cuts the woman's other arm off, and the way this effect is done is, oh, I wish I could learn how to do these effects. Um, practical effects all the way. Um, so, why is that my third death? Well, it shows just how brutal this killer is. Um, and the kills, there's only one kill that's uh, off screen, but I don't, I guess budgetary issues occurred and they couldn't do all of the deaths on screen. But other than that, there's only one death that's not on screen. Oh, one, one woman gets killed, uh, in a waterbed, uh, she gets killed while on a waterbed. The killer keeps on stabbing the waterbed trying to, uh, kill this woman. And pretty much the woman drowns. He finally gets a good stab in and stabs her right in the back of the head. Ow, that hurt. Um, right in the back of the head and the knife comes right out the mouth. And I'm just like... Great, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and uh, in the end, uh, we find out that the killer is Edmund Purdom. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's the Dean, and uh, he's he's the grown-up serial killer, the kid we saw at the beginning of the film, and he's. A pretty boring actor in this like uh when he's not killing people uh he's like very droned out uh but when he's a psycho killer you're like you can feel that wow this guy can act he can act like a real whack job when uh he wants to so yeah when he's a killer it's awesome. When he's just being innocent and just a model citizen, he's like, okay class, we've got to do this, and we want to make sure that the killings do not get out. 
So, yeah. Um, and we find that he hid the mother in the closet. He, he's got all the body parts he needs, and the body just falls to the ground. Uh, the killer ends up getting shot in the head. Uh, he's down for the count. And, uh, the main character, uh, played by Ian Sarah, or Mike Sarah, whatever his name is, um, he is, uh, getting his coat and everything, the next thing you know, the hand pops up, grabs his crotch, and pulls his dick and balls right up. And I'm like, oh, my dick, my dick, my dick, oh, that hurt, that hurt. It, ma it makes the man cringe. Uh, if you're a man and you see this, you'll be holding your balls up the end. So, anyways, what do I give pieces? Um, seeing it again, um, I'd have to give it... Mm, it's very, very enjoyable. Uh, I thought it, it was a near-perfect film. Other than the acting of the main character and... Um, the score, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Great movie to watch on uh, Halloween. And just a great movie all around. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Hopefully you all enjoyed this review. And please, subscribe, uh, like, comment, rate, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is Psychopathic One, signing off. Peace! Later.